This Hello, my name is Sam Raimi. I'm the director of the motion picture Spider-Man, which you've paid too much money to see. And with me is my good friend and co-producer, Grant Curtis. And I'm Laura Ziskin, and I'm here at the Sony Studios with Kirsten Dunst, and we're going to talk about Spider-Man. We're here at Sony where we spent most of last year making the Spider-Man movie. Kyle Cooper, who did the titles to the movie, created this uh, logo for Marvel, which has actually gotten an ovation in the theaters. The first time we showed Pretty the movie, amazing. people clapped for the Marvel logo. We're recording this from ADR2 on the Columbia Pictures lot, which is right next to the scoring stage. If you ever get a chance to see it, it's a little black box. Do a lot of voice work for pictures. Well, Grant, why don't you kick in? What are your thoughts about this uh, opening title sequence? Beautiful title sequence designed by Kyle Cooper and Imaginary Forces. Um, very well done. He worked tirelessly with a great team of artists creating this. It took many months return trips to the editing room, back into his world, then back to the editing room. A lot of artists and technicians spent a lot of time crafting this sequence. We really uh, didn't want to show Spider-Man earlier in the movie, because it was his origin story, but we wanted to give the audience a taste of him. So we tried to design with Kyle and his team uh, some sequence that um, would give the audience the flavor of the character, without actually um, spoiling the big reveal of Spider-Man before it was due. I think this is one of the, mo the best title sequences I've ever seen in my entire life of any film. <laughs> when I first came on the movie, Sam said the way he likes to work is to have two editors. They each work individually, um, and then he sees both of their cuts and both of their material scene for scene, and then at the end of the first cutting process, he'll screen the two movies back to back, the two cuts. And then, um, in his words, he then likes to mush them together. <laughs> I can tell, yeah. like, it's, it's, I think it's such a smart idea to yeah. have those two different perspectives. It's a great honor to have a chance to make the Spider Man picture and work brief briefly with Stan Lee. He's always been one of my childhood heroes. Created some of the greatest fiction characters in in American comic book history. That was my favorite day on the set when he came by. That was what, bizarre. What was that like? It, it was just, you guys were in um, watching dailies and uh, I waited outside for Stan. He showed up while you guys were in dailies and uh, the whole crew had broken for lunch and uh, I just showed Stan around the Times Square set out in Downey and it was very bizarre introducing the creator of Spider-Man to the world of Spider-Man on the film set. And he just walked around with a big smile on his face and uh, he was thoroughly pleased. Was it what he had hoped it would be? I think it was and more. I mean, he could tell that uh, from everybody, everybody was putting their 100% effort into making his vision and your vision come through on screen. And uh, he knew it was being well taken care of. That's me. This was shot in Queens, New York. On the right is my brother and his family walking as cameos. That was Ivan? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And little Max and Sophie wow. and Kyle. One of the very first um, storyboards that I saw in the movie was the design of this scene of Peter chasing the bus and of the kitty, the, the sort of, um, shall we say, portly young man eating the donut. And uh, it was really fun to see it come to life because it is exactly um, as he storyboarded it. Of course, brought to life by these lovely performances and, and the music and everything. It's really fun. I, um, I came into the movie uh, in July of, what year are we in? 2000. And uh, Sony had already made a decision to make the film 
and were they were in the very early stages of pre-production. Nobody had been the movie hadn't been cast yet, and the script was sort of in a state of flux. So that was when I came on to it. Uh, Avi Arad, who's the executive producer, of course, has been with it for many years, and people it's sort of folklore now about how long it's taken to bring Spider-Man to the screen. I guess 18 years or so from when they first made a decision to try to make the movie. And we have all sort of only half jokingly said that it was a good thing that it took this long to get made because the technology didn't really exist um, to have Spider-Man do the things that the fans would expect him to do. It was exciting to shoot this at Columbia University in New York. It's a beautiful university. The light kept changing dramatically when we were shooting this. It caused tremendous amounts of problems for uh, Don Burgess and the, uh, the gaffers, grips. I thought Willem did a wonderful job in this picture. He is both warm and intelligent, sweet in this scene, and that was necessary because um, we really needed Peter Parker to look up to the character of Norman Osborn. And uh, in some ways, Norman was supposed to be Pete's surrogate father in the piece. So Willem Dafoe had to uh, have those qualities. At the same time, he had to be incredibly physically adept to be able to ride that goblin glider in those that in incredible suit. It was like riding a um, mechanical bull from those bars in the Southwest. It took an incredible amount of uh, muscle ability and coordination. And then the third thing we needed for that actor to pull this role off was he had to have, obviously, a great deal of uh, menace to threaten Spider-Man. And I think Willem really pulled all three of those uh, qualities together and delivered quite well in his performance. This scene inside was, of course, shot months and months before um, in a location in Los Angeles. Right, right near USC, right? Right, in the Natural History right. Museum. Next, we have... And this was during night shooting. It wasn't even in the day. I remember I was so tired. Really so we long all, It was yeah. split days, and then we, we were, it was probably at, I don't know, two in the morning we're doing this. Right yeah, because now. it was a, because of the museum, and when oh, we, we could have to, control right. of certain parts of it, we had to be at, at night. And this, these were the days when we had the spider guy. Spider. Oh, right. The guy who was um, Steve Kutcher, who was actually the wrangling. wrangling the spiders. <laughs> using a set of reflexes with nerve conduction velocity so fast. I had a great team of uh, second unit directors who put together a lot of the pieces of these spiders for me. Uh, Doug Leffler did an excellent job. He was one of my chief storyboard artists and great second unit directors. And so was um, Jeff Lynch. He shot some of those spiders. And then um, we also had John Dykstra who did an additional second unit photography as a director. And um, Dick Buckley did an excellent job shooting on this picture. Delivered some great footage for that, um, the montage of the people speaking about Spider-Man in the second act. He shot a lot of that stuff, yeah. most of that stuff. Sam was very um, fixed on what the spider would look like right. that would bite Peter. Yeah. And uh, we were shooting in the winter, and spiders are summer critters. Right. So this spider wrangler had to go to New Zealand and Australia oh, to get oh spiders. God. But he came in the first day to see us with this box full of spiders, and we all sat there, you know, slightly repulsed and slightly mesmerized as he played with his spiders. I beg your pardon? Neil did a beautiful job. And his team created things like this web. Did a beautiful job out of monofilament and I think a hot glue gun. Yeah. He worked closely with our uh, special effects uh, house and, and John Frazier, making all those webs. I think she's so charming, along with uh, Toby in this scene. They really uh, give a lot of themselves. He's so afraid to ask her. He knows it's his chance, and he can't let it pass him by. Hey, uh, can I take your picture? I, I need one with a student in it. Sure, yeah. Great. Where do you want me? Oh, over here? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Don't make me look ugly. <laughs> that's impossible. <clears throat> oh, 
perfect. Is that good? Great. That's great. <laughs> I didn't really know a ton about Mary Jane. I, I knew I'd seen more Gwen Stacy for some odd reason. Um, when I was, I when I first met Sam, I was just flipping through the comics, and I I saw her and I was like, all right, I'm blonde, it makes sense. And I really didn't know a lot about Mary Jane and Peter's relationship, but of course I did lots of research after I got the role. A lot of that is the real Spider, a Black Widow with a, um, a dress they call it, put over it, a little shell, snapped over the abdomen of the spider so we could paint the shell without harming the actual spider. But sometimes that spider is created with the help of uh, John Dykstra and his incredible CGI team of artists and technicians. And they really uh, thought they did a great job matching that, matching the real spider. General Slocum, good to see you again. Mr. Balkan, Mr. Fargus, Norman, Mr. Osborne. Always a pleasure to have our board of directors pay us a little visit. I want to see the progress report on human performance enhancers. We tried vapor and Neil did a, Neil Spisak did a lot of research on putting together this lab. I remember what his research told him was um, these projects come and go so quickly that everything was going to be on wheels. Nothing would be permanent. Everything Jerry rigged and brought in on carts and rolling platforms. I thought that was so unlike what I had seen in the movies and so dead on. Strom, our entire staff certifies the product ready for human testing. Dr. Strom, we need to take the whole line back to formula. <sighs> back to formula? Dr. Osborne, I'm going to be frank with you. I never supported your program. We have my predecessor to thank for that. Norman, the general gave the go-ahead to Quest Aerospace to build a prototype of their exoskeleton design. They test in two weeks. And if your so-called performance enhancers have not had a successful human trial by that date, I'm going to pull your funding. I'm going to give it to them. Gentlemen, ladies. And the Lord said, let there be light. And voila, there is light. Forty soft. I love Cliff Robertson. He's an old school gentleman, great actor, and he's got a really good soul. That fellow. He um, really uh, brought a lot of life to a part that was. Um, it was just a very simple role, but he infused it with a great deal of warmth and love, and that's what it's all about. He really made me miss him when he was gone in the story. Well, well, let's look in the paper and see. There are the one ads. What do we got here? Computer, computer salesman, computer engineer, computer analyst. My Lord, even the computers need analysts these days. May, I'm 68 years old. I'm too old for computers. And besides, I In this moment when May says to him, uh, comforts him. He realizes in the performance that she's right here. And I listen, watch him listen to her. We've been down and out before, but somehow we survive. Yeah. Oh, hi, sweetie. You're just... He really is in the moment. He, he takes in what the other actors are saying and reacts to it in a realistic way. Rosemary gives him a lot of great stuff to act off of. She was great as Aunt May. Did, did you get some pictures, Peter? Uh, I got a crash. Everything's fine. What's that all about? We like this scene. That's that's the computerized body on Toby. Don't give away the secret. Same with the buff one too. No, I'm sure. Well, I will tell you this though: we did have we the body double for Toby when he was skinny. Right. Sam will get mad at me for telling this. Oh, but um, well. he kept. He didn't think the guy was skinny enough. <laughs> really? Saying, I want somebody. Well, then his skinnier. head would look huge. I would look ridiculous. Skinny. Our editor Bob Morosky did a great job putting this dream sequence together. We really didn't have the money left to do what we wanted to do, so it was cut. But Bob scrapped together pieces from uh, titles, old stock footage, 
was used in Dark Man, old picture I worked on with Bob, and um, some new graphics and pulled it all together. And even a shot from an old Italian horror picture. Which shot was that? <laughs> that shot of the eyeball with the spider on it. I don't know if it's a Lucci Fulci, uh, Fulci picture, Lucio Fulci, or some other film, but that's where that's from. <laughs> Let me reschedule with a proper medical staff and a volunteer. I mean, if you just give me two weeks. Two weeks? In two weeks, we'll have lost the contract request and Oscorp will be... Dead. There's so much going on here with John Fraser's mechanical effects. I remember shooting in there and all the precision timing with everything he's got going on with the computers and this and this table bed and the doors shutting. So it was really a beautiful work of art that he put together to make all this look so great. I remember we really, really wanted to get this green gas, but we every time we did a test with the green smoke, it, it was terribly toxic. Every every combination we used with mechanical effects. Finally, at the last minute, we had to just use the white, um, I think, liquid nitrogen, and um, then colorize it, colorize it as a post-production effect. Norman. That was a hard surface to light because it has so many angles of glass. I kept seeing a lot of reflections. This makes every this scene makes everybody jump. Yeah, it's scary. It is scary. Whoa, that looks so good. Great stunt pulled off by Haberstead, Jeff Haberstead and his guys going through that window. This was really fun. This was something we we did, tested early on with this giant pair of glasses oh, in really? front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, Toby had a, a pair of jo a large pair of oversized glasses that he would hold up, and then the cameraman would uh, rack focus and go back, blurring it as the uh, as the lenses came into frame to pull off the illusion of out of focus, his eyes being out of focus. Weird. Now, something you maybe don't notice, but look really closely at his wallpaper. Can you tell what the design is on the wallpaper? It's little spider webs. Aww. Yeah. I'm <laughs> fine. Mm. You can't really tell. You can't really tell. It's <laughs> no. our own little inside. But it's, there. <laughs> it's Neil Spizak who designed the production. It's his little secret. Right. This was all done on a set. The entire house on the Columbia Pictures lot. This bedroom. Okay. I remember uh, Jeff designed that for us. Jeff Haberstadt, our stunt coordinator. That uh, the distance between the rail and the wall, so that Toby could learn that stunt of yeah. running along the wall. We're painting the kitchen right after school. Got it? Sure thing. I'm what a great job Neil did with their house, too. Every time I see this, I think I'm walking in my grandparents' house. Neil and his art directors really studied the homes in that Queens area where this exterior was shot. Yeah. And really patterned it precisely after the interior decors and the add on front porch that was made into an entry hall. All those details the yeah. cracking plaster, the mix. The mix of wallpaper and 
and paint from different eras where that front room was added on. Hi, MJ. Hey, MJ. I don't know if you realize this, but we've, uh, we've been neighbors. Remember, our prop guy was driving this bus. Yeah, Martin. Martin. He's a brilliant <laughs> prop guy, but I, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Never heard such grinding of gears. <laughs> This was actually originally planned to be a kind of more elaborate scene where he, more than just that, he, that um, then sticking to the, to the banner, he was then going to leap out of the way of a truck. And, uh, but we ended up cutting it both for, for budgetary and, and time purposes. It's better subtle, though. It's like, yeah, it actually it worked. It would have been too much with the jumping the bus thing, too. Osborne's mansion was also designed and shot here on the Columbia Pictures lot in Culver City. This interior. I remember Danny Elfman saw this place and said, I want to live there. Yeah. I thought, Danny, no, no, that's the home of the villain. You, you don't want to live there. He loved, he loved the design of this particular room. And I remember if you look in this room, you'll see a, a wide variety of masks that Karen O'Hara, our set decorator, went to great pains. Uh, to get. Some of them are quite valuable and, uh, and they're all quite beautiful. They did a really great job, uh, you know, just with the background stuff of telling the story of his love of masks and tribal masks. What about it? That's Bill Paxton's dad in the background there. Yeah. I love that guy. John he, Paxton. He's a great actor. He's in Simple Plan for us, too. Yeah, he is. He argues with Bill about feed for the day of the month. That's right. He's really funny in that picture. Not CGI, by the way, that little, like, that's catch thing. Real. That's all Toby. That's <laughs> Which is pretty impressive. <laughs> and they put, like, sticky glue stuff to, you know, stick his hand to the tray, too. Many takes of those items. Yeah, there, remember? yeah there was. This was actually a scene that uh, this, this, we had the scene in what subsequently transpires, but the studio had asked us to actually cut that the part tray part, because we'd originally so had great. two days scheduled for the scene, right. and then in the you know the the vicissitudes of production, we were had to cut some time, and they wanted us to cut it a day. So we made it that we were going to shoot it in one day, and that part of the scene was going to have to go. But Sam and I really really wanted it. So great, and so we said love that. we're going to do it anyway, and. Um, so we did shoot this scene in one day, although it was an extremely long. Do you oh, remember how long it was? God, it was yeah. like a 16-hour day. I yeah, know. But, but thank God we did it. Yeah, because yeah. you know what? People love that, and it's that an is scene. used as like one of the clips, too, whenever we do our publicity. Like, people love that scene. It's so cute, because he's learning his powers, and he saves her. Parker? The school was also built by Neil on stage at, here at Columbia. I love this set. It's 1952 s school hall. That sequence of um, the Spidey Sense was something that we began designing actually kind of late. In We were in production already. And the shot was one of the last things finished. It wasn't the absolute last. The absolute last thing finished was the very last shot of the movie, which took 18 months from the time they started, that we started talking about it until it was the very last thing that came in the movie. But this was also, came in quite late. John composited all these pieces, shot the fist, shot the background. He really um, did an excellent job putting these effects together for us. I loved your idea there of showing Peter's POV, POV while in, in mid backstand. Which one? Looking up at MJ is a great shot. You know, uh, that was um, Don Burgess' idea. Oh, so, really? Yeah, let's pick up a piece of uh, oh, cool. Peter's point of view at that moment. I thought that was a great idea. 
Joe, who plays Flash, he was kind of an unconventional choice because he didn't really look like the Flash in the comic book, but we just liked him. <laughs> Thought he had a great quality. Peter, that was, that was amazing. Of watching Toby think on screen. He's got so much going on. I love in that sequence how he's coming to realize these powers. He doesn't quite know what's happening, but he, yeah. he's kind of secretly thrilled. Once he finally delivers that knockout punch, he's stunned and it, and it transitions into like, oh yeah. And then this fear starts to creep over him, this change that's happening to him. And that sort of overwhelms him and the confusion of that drives him out and he plays it all silently. Yeah, he's great. I want more wall climbing in the sequel. I, know, I love this, the climbing. I love the climbing this. is the best part. And yeah. really yeah, every time I see it I get excited. Like mm -hmm. that one part where after Uncle Ben is killed and he's like hopping yeah. and wall climbing and it's just so exciting. It's it's hot. I have a funny story actually about um, the wall climbing that comes later. I'll tell it later. Oh, really? <laughs> I remember Toby doing that. He was on a treadmill yeah. to do those few runs. That this was, was so a funny. really complicated business to get this sequence. Isn't it sad too? It's like so much hard work and nobody realizes it for like split seconds. Well, it's and better that they don't know. No, I know, no but Rex still appreciated in the DVD. Go with. I love this hilarious. This is really Why? cute. Up, up and away, Web. This was Toby improvising with Go. much encouragement Go. from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Toby can be so funny. Really funny. He's really funny. He's really a great Peter Parker, I thought, in this film. Yeah. He's really amazing. Molding. This was hard in a way because it was the first place where we actually see the webs. You know, and, and among the many challenges of the movie, certainly making something that looks like a web, that a human size. Spider-Man could swing from was one of the biggest challenges and um, a combination of obviously practical webs and CG. This is really funny. I know. <laughs> Web. And then I love that the next shot's like, oop, running home. It's like such a little boy, like, oh, I'm hurt, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm running home. <laughs> We painted a, uh, an image on the wall, and uh, we'd had various ideas for what that should be, and, and then Neil came up with this notion that um, it, that it, it's, it's like for a, a talk a radio, show. you know, sort of um, drive time radio show, and uh, it's like the spider on the windshield. Windshield, yeah, as that's so amazing. Pointed out. <laughs> well, no, I just yeah. it just came to me. I was like, right. oh my god, it's brilliant. <laughs> Now, little known fact, the woman who plays Mary Jane's mother is uh, my co-producer Ian Bryce's mm -hmm. wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's and also she an actress in her those. actress in her own right. She she loves loved wearing those leopards. She got the she sleeziest did, yeah. outfits. I loved it. This scene was shot at about 6 a.m. the night before I turned 19. On Kirsten's oh, birthday. Yeah, 19, yeah. yeah, It was actually, so it was, it was on my birthday. On, or we were shooting in the morning, which was right. your birthday. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we celebrated. Yes, I got a cake. It tasted like, it was a cool cake because it was like a breakfast cake in yeah. a way. It was like strawberry jam and, I don't know, bagel. Or, I don't know, it was weird. It's good. Sorry. We were fighting um, okay. the sun. Oh, yes. And the birds, and which yet, if you listen Toby's carefully, you yeah. can hear the birds. <laughs> Just on Toby's, though, more. Right, more. the sunrise birds. So I got to say mine. And you can see my long underwear, too, in the shot. And can we tell that you're wearing your very own coat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my own Because we originally were going to shoot the scene the without the coat, but Oof. it was freezing. Yeah. And that was that your coat you guys, that we yeah. all loved. <laughs> I think this scene was shot on Kirsten's 18th birthday, is that right? 
Can't wait to get I think so. So I remember there's a big cake. Yeah. At the end of the end of the night. Yep. It's our last night in New York. Very cold. It's true, the whole crew had hoods on and scarves and gloves and hats and act on stage. Really? She does such a beautiful job here, opening up a little window of her soul to Peter. You're awesome in all this cool plays. Really? Yeah. Maybe the first time MJ's ever really done that for, to somebody. Like baby when you played Cinderella. Peter, that was first grade. Well, even so, sometimes you know people. I remember uh, like a lot of the scenes. In this case, Toby and I just had to keep cutting down the dialogue and cutting it down what do you see coming for you? to just find uh, the minimum that we could say. I don't know. Although uh, David Kapp did a great job writing it, and then Alvin Sargent did a beautiful job um, polishing it. When we got there, we just realized that um, less had to be said to make it work. For you? Yeah, I think that garage back there became your guys' office between takes. Yeah. Or the next door garage, the, the door would come up and you guys would work out of the office or out of the garage. You're taller than you look. I hunch. We were really racing against the sun this night, I remember. Mostly because of that last minute uh, edit session before the performance. Okay, yeah. Ron, my new birthday present. Come on. Okay, Grant, what kind of car is that? It's a Dodge Viper. Is it really? Not a Viper. I no, thought it was a, the lower end version. No, it's not a Viper, it's a Dodge uh, crate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. What is that thing? It's pretty, our, our transportation coordinator, Randy Peters, let me drive it home one night when we had one in Los Angeles. I think it's a Dodge Prowler. Is that it? I think you're right. It's a brilliant idea of Stan Lee's originally to have Peter enter a um, wrestling match where those colorful costumes are a must to develop the Spider-Man costume. I thought that was a smart way to have him originally come up with an outfit. Yeah. This was... um. One of the Marvel artists who we got to do some of the sketches so that the design of the costume would look like um, the comic books for the comic book aficionados. Jeff Lynch shot a lot of the drawing of the um, costume for me, and that artist did a lot of the uh, actual illustration, like you suggested. Yeah. We did have a member, Kirsten. We had the scene of you dancing in the window. Oh, there yeah, was but this then it was, was super provocative. initially <laughs> this sequence took place over a number of days, and so and at one point in the scene, Peter looks out his window and Mary Jane's dancing. Oh the, wait, no, remember I was you first dancing. dancing in my underwear? Yeah, and then in a leopard thong. No, not really. No, then we covered. But, you up. <laughs> yeah, then I wore pajama pants because it was a little too much. It was cute. What's going on in oh, there? now I see their spider webs. See the spider kind of. webs? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I love this. What is this? This is hilarious. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's like such a little boy. That was so a Toby, Toby ad lib. That's pretty that cute. That came out of the scene with her. I love that. I love yeah. the webs. That looks cool. Meanwhile. Something's bothering him. Maybe he's too embarrassed to tell me what it is. Maybe I'm too embarrassed to, to ask him, you think? I don't know. I just don't know anymore. Hey, well, going to the downtown library. I'll see you later. Oh, yeah, wait, Pete. I'll uh, I'll drive you there, buddy. Oh, no, I'll take the train. No, no, no. I need the exercise. Go on. Go, 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 go. He needs the exercise. That's a funny line. There's the car, Sam. It's an 88 Oldsmobile Delta, 1973. It's a, yeah, 1973 Delta 88 Oldsmobile. 
kids, it's currently for sale. <laughs> if you'd like to own a piece of the Spider-Man movie, just contact me. And <clears throat> there's a little problem with the radiator, but um, otherwise, I would highly recommend it to complement any connoisseur's motion picture prop movie collection. No collection is complete without it. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Run away? No, no, you're not supposed to run away. But Pete, look. You're changing. I know. I went through exactly the same thing at your age. No, not exactly. Peter, these are the years when a man changes into the man he's going to become the rest of his life. Just be careful who you change into. This guy, Flash Thompson, he probably deserved what happened. This cliff Just made this scene work. Be yeah, I did. Beautifully. Doesn't give you the right to. It's one of my favorite scenes in the picture. With great power comes great responsibility. Are you afraid that I'm going to turn into some kind of criminal? Quit worrying about me, okay? Something's different. I'll figure it out. Stop Plus, I kept Clift up till like two in the morning the previous night because we were again recutting this scene, yeah. just trying to make the dialogue play and rewriting it. Yeah. He got to the set. He was exhausted because it was like a 6 a.m. call, and so he had probably like three and a half hours of sleep. Yeah, he did a great job that night. I love that Danny played the theme here, too. It's such an interesting impulse. Oh, to, to He had these two themes going, really, Peter's theme and Spider-Man's theme. Right. He and they, you know, they would each derive from the other, but I love that he played that right there. This was pretty funny. That's a um, bone saw. That's Randy Savage, and he's a, obviously a wrestler. Um, uh, and he, when he came to audition for us, I just fell in love with his voice. Like amazing that um, voice. Do you remember when Randy Savage came in and met with you for the first time on this? I can't remember our first meeting. Yeah. Well, he was. You were asking him what what type of moves that he thought would be, would be good on screen and stuff like that. And I'll never forget, he, he grabbed Ian Bryce, our producer, his head, and he shoved him between his legs, and he demonstrated a pile driver on Ian. I thought he was going to kill Ian and snap him in two, and Ian's face was turning red, and Randy just kept going and working him over. But I uh, felt so sorry for Ian. There's my buddy Bruce Campbell. I love the fact that he would do this for me, be in this picture. I only wish I could have punished him in some way. No the audience seems to enjoy Bruce's performances in films relative to the amount of punishment that he endures in that picture. <laughs> you remember that young lady's name? That's Octavia Spencer, the check-in lady. Is that who you're asking? Yes. Yeah, she did a great job. And she was Francine Maisler's uh, assistant. Sometimes, yeah, she comes in and helps. She did a really good job for us. I remember we had footage of those women beating up that poor Russell, yeah. kicking him in the face <laughs> and the stomach once he was down, but we just didn't have time to incorporate everything in the picture. I love Bruce's Cadillac medallion that uh, um, they put on him. James Atchison yeah. gave him, yes. Into the arena at this time. If he could withstand just three minutes in the cage with Bonesaw McGraw, the sum of three thousand dollars will be paid to. What's your name, kid? The Human Spider. The Human Spider, that's it? That's the best you got? Bruce yeah. is so great. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, you probably won't admit to it, but if you look really closely, I think I remember who pushed Spider Man out onto the, the platform that day. I think that's, that's Sam Raimi. Just the hand. Yeah. I love shoving Spider-Man around. No, he got my name wrong. You gotta tell him, you moron. Yep. Yeah, that was actually one of our PAs, Reese, who shoved him out, but that was your hand. And I think I remember who's throwing the popcorn at Toby here as well. How dare you. Yeah, well, you're not as nice as everybody says. Somebody's got to tell the truth someday. Well, I guess it was a pleasure working with you. Yeah, thank you, sir. That's something, that line came, came from a, a real story. Rob Tappert once was driving uh, in Detroit, and he had just, my, old, my partner, a good friend, and he was 
going past an automobile accident. They were pulling some guy out of the car, and that's what he was screaming. Oh, really? <laughs> my legs. Oh, God, I can't feel my legs. As horrible as it was. I'll twist it. That's, that's why it's in the picture. Where they wanted to give Peter Parker a taste of what was to come. Some kind of mistake. I didn't sign up for a cage match. Hey, unlock the thing. Take the chain off. Mark Andrews, our storyboard artist, contributed an incredible amount to this and this whole fight scene. A lot of the ideas in this in this scene are his, and um, was really guided with by his brilliance in, the, in his uh, great storyboarding. Do you remember Mark? Oh yeah, great guy. He was an animal. He could just crank those out. He had such great ideas too. And then a lot of these fighting moves were developed by um, Jeff Haberstadt and um, others by. Chris, our stunt, Chris, stuntman. Yeah, Chris Daniels did a lot of great work. Great Spidey pose reference. He did a lot of homework, and he really knows his Spider-Man poses. And then some of the ideas just came from watching those big-time wrestling videos, like with the chair, beating him up with the chair. Oh, yeah. And Randy had a lot of great input on all this. And wasn't this one of the first sequences we filmed um, with the, the wrestling arena? Yes, it was. Because I remember they had a big press conference and it took place in this arena. Yeah. That's right. Ian scheduled it early for some reason. Well, we had to film it so we could make way for the, uh, the balcony sequence in Times Square that was filmed on the same stage. We had to film here and then get out. And all of those guys in the crowd did an incredible job. All the extras, they put so much into the screaming and the jumping, so much energy went into yeah. that. And I could tell they really loved Spider-Man and that's why they were there. Yeah. So I think we got a better performance than... Uh, you usually get from those extras because they're such yeah. fans of the comic book. Cash Oshman was the uh, extras casting director on that. He did a really good job uh, out of here. giving us a lot of great people. 100 bucks. The ad said 3,000. I like Neil's set in this room and in the hallway and the sound job. They both work to tell the story that this is some subterranean area of the arena. Yeah. I need that money. Which is a hard thing to communicate. That's my problem. The wrestling promoter is played by Larry Joshua. He's always been one of my favorite character actors. This is such a pivotal scene and so much um, right out of the comic book and something that we felt we had to really, you know, do in a way that the fans would recognize it. Right. It, it's such a, it is obviously the scene upon which the whole story turns. He's got my money! Thanks. What the hell's the matter with you? You let him go. Cut him off from the lobby. Look at the rake to the ceiling. That's what I was referring to when I mentioned that Neil had designed this place to seem like it was underneath the stadium. It's just great. I love Toby's face here. He's a sinner. He's let pride and anger rule. You see a look in his face there that you won't see anywhere else in the picture. He's full of himself. Feels like his bitter, your own bitter justice has been served. That the guy deserved it. to sin he'll end up paying for the rest of his life. What happened? Carjacker, he's been shot. Look, we just called the paramedics. They're on their way. Hey, hey, stay back. Uncle Ben? When Cliff Robertson was a real sport in shooting this, I remember. It was probably 3 o'clock in the morning. It was freezing cold. And we'd say, OK, let's get this set up at Cliff on the ground. And now he's just throw himself right down in the cold concrete. Yeah. No, no screaming for a fernie pad or any of that nonsense. Yeah. He would just be waiting for the camera crew, crew uh, throwing himself down in the concrete and waiting for the camera set up to come in. He's a real professional. I remember it was written originally that Cliff was uh, already expired when um, Toby's character came up to him. But I think it was his idea to say, why don't, why don't we just have me alive yeah. to make contact with Peter one last time? It's a great idea. That alley that he just ran in was the same alley that he climbed up the wall in. Mm -hmm. We shot one in the day and this at night, obviously. Yeah. 
downtown Los Angeles. I love this. I have a funny story about this. We did a test um, of the CG Spidey climbing up the wall, which was a very early iteration of this scene right here. And um, I took the test. I called Amy Pascal and John Kelly, and I said, we put Toby in the suit. And um, we tested him climbing up the wall. You know, we put a wall on its side and tested him climbing up the wall. And I want to show it to you. We were in pre-production. I was trying to get more money for the movie, basically. Right, right. And I called them into the screening room, and they came down, and um, they watched it. It was CG. Right. But they, I said it was Toby in the suit. They oh. went nuts. Really? They said, oh, my God, it's amazing. He looks so incredible. Right. And then you like, Then we laughed. Yeah. <laughs> this was a composite of Toby's real face put into the CGI Spider-Man. That was a very tricky move. I really enjoy watching him struggle with his swinging. He's obviously never done it before, and it's really, if you watch closely, I love the subtlety that you and John Dykstra put together in here of him twisting and turning on one of these shots coming up, showing him struggling with uh, his gift and curse. Arthur Coburn was uh, insistent, one of my editors, that we had to track his progression, that he had to have, as far as his development of grace, he had to be as awkward as possible in this early sequence to sell it. I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, it was. I shot this car sequence with our second unit director of photography, Chris Faluna. He did a lot of great second unit work for us. Chris is a gamer. He's so happy to be going. This is a beautiful set built, set built by Neil. It's uh, supposed to be the interior of the uh, abandoned part of the New York Port Authority building, where the old ferry used to uh, arrive every day. Powerful. Yeah. Thanks. Again, this is a you know this moment that is so much a trigger and so integral to the what made the the whole story work in the comic book. And yeah. um, I've heard a lot of discussion yeah. about you know there's this whole notion that Spider-Man doesn't ever kill anybody, but he has to be responsible for this guy's death. So the guy actually trips, right. but the whole sort of of um, ethic of, of Spider-Man is he defends people, but he doesn't ever kill really, them. yeah. Even, of course, with the goblin who's he kills himself. responsible for his own <laughs> death. death, yeah. He just has a lot of good luck in that way. And this was an image that we loved, of, of uh, which was also an early image Sam had, of Peter on one of the eagles in the Chrysler building. Although, if you know New York, you'll know that that skyline is something that we made up, which was something we did often in the movie, where we put took architecture that we liked and and kind of manipulated it in the, in the CG world. So you know it's New York, but it isn't. You know, no street is maybe exactly. Photo real, what it really is. That's why I really, I, 
I don't know. I, I, New York has never been shot in this way, and I think it's so inventive and beautiful and romantic in a way when he swings through the city. Good evening, General. Good to see you. Our exoskeleton's got real firepower, General Slocum. Well, if it does what you say it can, I'll sign that contract tomorrow. 17, 16, He's clear, let's go! I assume you're confident about this test. Absolutely. Captain Curtis is our top pilot. Now, what about your commitment to Oscorp? Nothing would please... This entire sequence, starting with that Quest Aerospace stenciled on the crate, all the way through the explosions of the uh, bunkers, shot by John Dykstra, my second unit director. We are picking up an unidentified object, closing fast. What the hell is that? Now your favorite uh, transition is coming. Oh, my God. oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's really uh, fun. so cool. That is really fun. It. Chess. You know, Sam just mixes such a great, you know, we have some action and then you come to the more humanistic things. And like, it's just so great how he balances all of that out. You're never like, the kids in the audience are never like too scared because right after comes like a happy thing yeah. or a sweet thing. Or, it's just a great mixture of action to the storyline. It just blends very nicely. Peter, the science award. That's terrific. Yeah. This, I don't know if I should tell these things or not. This scene was actually shot oh, yeah. in, um, on the Sony lot in front of the executive building because we only had a half a day to shoot the scene. So we needed, we didn't have time to go to a location. So we dressed up the front of uh, the building and, and wouldn't let any of the executives get into their office <laughs> on that morning. But you know what? I kind of love it because now when I walk on the Sony lot, it's like, right. oh, that was our school that in Spider-Man. It'll always be there. That's and so right. it's it actually makes for a great a great tour spot on the Sony it's tours. True. <laughs> That's true. Can I, can I fix you something? No, thanks. I love Rosemary. She's so she's amazing. Huge. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She's so beautiful, I think. She's magnificent yeah, she looking. Is. She was funny, Rosemary, because she really didn't know anything about Spider-Man. Really? She was delighted to do... She'd worked with Sam on The Gift, and I knew her through mutual friends, but had never worked with her. And she was, you know, she had no idea what she was getting into. Oh. So now she goes places, and of course she's recognized <gasps> as Aunt May. She has a whole That's new so uh, following. Fan following, yeah. It's a great scene. Yeah. I remember right before the camera rolled, I told Toby, your name is not going to be above the title. I missed him a lot today. I know. I miss him too. But he was there. I can't help thinking about the last thing I said to him, he tried to tell me something important, and I threw it in his face. You loved him. And he loved you. He never doubted the man you'd grow into. How you were meant for great things. You won't disappoint him. Love Danny's score right here. It really takes you into the moment. With great power comes great responsibility. Remember that, Pete. Remember that. That shot was shot with an Earl Wiggins cam in downtown LA with the New York uh, background. Great shot. 
Doug Leffler shot this little scene for me, the whole robbery there. Mm -hmm. And these snippets were shot by Dick Buckley, second unit director. I love that dog picture. <laughs> <laughs> we called her the dog walker. Get a load of this! These guys I actually found on a construction site. We were in um, shooting the scene in front of the library with Uncle Ben, and we were trying to get, you know, like real faces, great faces. And I found these guys in um, this construction site. <laughs> And they couldn't believe it. They said, what do you mean? We're going to be in a movie? Oh, that's cute. It's always better to get, you know, real people. Guy with eight hands. Lucy Lawless, friend of Sam's. And this guy I love. Yeah, he was really funny. Doesn't he look like Owen Wilson? <laughs> kind of? A little bit. He doesn't have Will's, Owen's no. great nose. No. Spider-Man. He's a criminal. That's who he is. I love a him. Oh, he's so he's fantastic. He's so JK good. had worked with Sam um, in The Gift, and he came to see us in New York, and it was one of those, it was like meeting you, my dear. It was like, oh, this you. guy has to play this part, born to play the part. And then once we got the hair, it's the thing about hair. hair I know. Once we got the hair, he was Jameson. And Sam's brother's in this scene also. Like the Delta 88 and Bruce Campbell, Ted Raimi is in all Sam Raimi movies, oh. and he's hilarious. There's Sam's brother. <laughs> There's Ted, yeah. So both Macy's and Conaway's both have three quarters of the same. We sold out four printings. Sold out? Every copy. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. There's a problem with page seven. I make it page eight and give him 10% off. Okay. I make it 5%. <laughs> that can't be done. Get out of here! <laughs> He's, really He's so funny. good, yeah. And Sam loves to work with him because he loves to... It's such a big brother-little brother relationship. Really? He really likes to torture him. Oh. He makes him do, you know, 12 takes. He's really kind of sadistic. For a picture of Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous. It's a famous New York uh, extra radio man that goes sneaking by right there. Do you remember him? Sure do. Radio yeah. man. He's a classic. Hey. He was in For Love of the Game, but he got uh, found the cutting room floor, but he did a great job for us in that one, too. What are you doing around here? I'm uh, up begging for a job. How about you? Oh, Every time I see I'm these two together, they really make a connection for me. Yeah. So she gives a little bit of herself in everything she does. She's very generous. She's great at playing layers and levels of things. She's so embarrassed, doesn't want Peter to know. I see she's not a very good liar in the scene. Busted. Yes, Enrique, okay? I get you. Well, we've been happy no more, you hear me? Peter even feels worse than she does about the whole thing. He's very empathetic. Try There's my the button. Try my cream <laughs> Try my cream pie. pie. <laughs> It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Don't tell Harry. It makes you want to go to New York. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful day, it too. It was. I love We're going out, didn't he tell you? Oh, yeah, right. I, I think he'd hate the idea of my waiting for you. There's like paparazzi guys, too. Toby really pisses off the paparazzi guys. They're nicer to me. But for really? some odd reason. Do they go away when you tell them to go away? Well, they're just like nicer to me because, you know, the more you act like, you know, oh, don't take my picture, the more, I don't know. Mm. It's just a wave to them or whatever, yeah. and they go away then. Right, give them their But moment. Toby likes messing with them a little bit more. And and they were all in his eye line. They just stayed out of my close-up eye line, but they, throughout the, his eye line the whole time, they were always taking his yeah, pictures remember that. and stuff like that. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll come by and have some of your moon dance coffee someday. And I won't tell Harry. No, don't tell Harry. I won't. I won't tell Harry. I love that location. It's right across from um, NYU. It was an amazing apartment where the exterior was shot. This, of course, was a set that Neil designed. Yeah, this is on an the stage. amazing apartment. Fantastic set. Yeah, where yeah. do you get this apartment in New York? I'd love to live here. Daddy got it for him. <laughs> Daddy. They even have a nice bathroom. I'm glad you're here. I need your help. I'm really lost. 
I remember when we worked on this set, Toby McGuire had a lot of good notes for myself and Neil Spisak about the reality of the size of the loft apartment that these two would really have. Yeah. And the style of the furnishings. He really had a good, much more realistic take on it and mm -hmm. guided us from a character point of view, which is so important in making a picture, to listen to the actors and and believe that they have the best take on who they are and what they uh, what they know about their world, to listen to that. Yeah. See, I love this um, intrigue, this sort of the setup of the triangle. And Sam had said even early on that he wanted this, I guess, 90210 or Melrose Place. Oh, yeah, I don't watch yeah. this show. Like, that he, very soap opera. Yeah, that he wanted these um, kind of teenage relationships um, to be moving, in, you know, in a parallel line with the superhero story. Right. What other skills do you have? I really believe it. I really see um, that kind of behavior. <laughs> seems, yeah, it seems really real to me. <laughs> Hello. Let's go. Move it. Watch the street. And that was really me in the suit during this whole fight scene. That was you. Yeah. You're very acrobatic. I you know. <laughs> You're multi talented. I saw it bring it on. Sometimes. I <laughs> <laughs> Jumps. Jeez. Neil Spisak and his team had to come up with these pictures. They're very difficult because obviously Spider Man can't be doing any of the things in reality that are needed in these pictures. We can't do it with an actor. So we had to really stage backgrounds and separate foreground elements and do a lot of composites and then clean up in a digital air, digital state. It was quite a big deal to come up with those pictures that Peter supposedly took. I'll give you 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo. I like that there's a slight old-fashioned quality to the whole film. Mm -hmm. Like, it definitely feels like 50s comic yeah. book. Even with what we wear, like I told Jim, I really wanted to wear a, a trench coat in the yeah. film because it just signified for me that classic girl and the comic book kind of look and everything. Yeah, I'm pleased about that, that we captured, looks like a, a comic book. Yeah, and it has an old school feel to it, the movie, a little bit. I was so happy that Elizabeth Banks took the job of Betty Brandt out in the, uh, in the reception area here. Because uh, the talented actress like that, I was able to have these actors make a moment when there was really nothing there. Well, Bill Nunn did a great job as Robbie Robertson as well. I'm Peter Parker. I'm a photographer. Yes, I can see that. He strikes out everywhere. Yeah, he strikes out. But at the same time, I see on his face that as lame as he is, he's actually achieved one of his dreams. So he feels a sense of fulfillment. Yeah. In short, ladies and gentlemen of the board, costs are down, revenues are up, and our stock... Neil designed this set on the Warner Brothers lot. That is one of his um, one of his best accomplishments. It's really beautifully detailed, and he's created these depressions in the walls where he would hide these uh, fluorescent tubes. Quite beautiful, giving it a lot of dimensionality. The last thing they want is a power struggle with entrenched management. The deal is off if you come with it. The board expects your resignation in 30 days. But you can't do this to me. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? Oh, Max, please. Norman, the board is unanimous. We're announcing the sale after the World Unity Festival. I'm sorry. You're out, Norman. There's the goblin theme. What a complicated shot that is right there. I mean, you've got Downey, you've got New York background plates, you've got uh, pieces shot on the stages here at Sony. Very complex. It took us a long, long time to design that shot. 
in a lot of these shots here in the Times Square sequence. Neil did a great job working with uh, Don Burgess and John Dykstra and his team over there, just uh, seamlessly tying a lot of locations together. Don Burgess had a very difficult job in shooting all these different elements to fit together, lighting-wise. Yeah. That is obviously a stage shot here, but the last shot of Parker was shot on the streets of Downey. Yeah. And then that you're right, he had a lot of New York photography and it all had to blend together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Remember this drama of trying yeah, to find the dress? I love that dress. Yeah, it's good. It makes sense too, because it's not an expensive dress, yeah. you know? It's like, great choice. Jimmy, do me a favor. I forgot my drink inside. Come on. I also like that line where he says, um, I w why didn't you wear the black dress? My father loves black. <laughs> I think it's a funny line. Well, Harry, have you seen my father around? Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure if he's uh, coming today. This was the most complicated, without question, the most complicated thing we did in the movie, even in some ways more complicated than the end. And we would have these meetings. We would have these weekly or biweekly or sometimes daily what we call Times Square meetings. Mm -hmm. Starting from the very beginning when we made the decision to set the scene in Times Square, the logistics um, of how to do it and how to get the shots. And the building where you guys are on the balcony is obviously a building that Neil made up. It doesn't right. really exist in Times Square, but we had to fit it in geographically. And then there were plates that were shot for this stuff up in the sky. And then there was a gigantic set built, of course, in Downey. So even in terms of, uh, even though it's a, like a five minute sequence, um, in terms of the resources and the shooting time, um, we probably shot between the set and the location three weeks maybe. Yeah. So it really was, a, month, was yeah. a big deal. There was Stan Lee. There's Stan Lee. Yeah. And Laura's daughter's coming in My too. My daughter. And one of the stuntmen who just fell was a guy who played Spider-Man on the TV show. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, remember that? Yep. Oh, here we go, Kirsten. Oh, here starts a <laughs> screaming match. Hold your ears. <laughs> Ew, oh my god. Oh. I, I kept telling Sam, please, I love that shot. Just great. Take it's girls in movies who scream really annoy me. <laughs> At the end, I got a little annoyed by my screaming. At the end of the movie. I love that. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. The pumpkin bomb was kind of fun because, um, you know, the goblin was full of... Um... Oh, there's my daughter. Yeah. Hi, Julie. <laughs> the goblin has this bag of tricks, you know, and, and we, when we were sitting and thinking about it, you know, what would a pumpkin bomb look like? Oh, Who would yeah. think of such a thing to begin with? This kid's stupid, man. I know he's in shock, yeah. but it's he's just our like, um, move already. That's Wouldn't our your mother go in and move you if your mother? I mean, hello, <laughs> what an awful to mother. Him. Oh yeah, whatever. Hold it right there. I surrender. Willem demanded to do all his own fighting. He felt that the character had to be consistent, and that it would show if he didn't. If he let stuntman do his work, he knew it would be a stuntman. It wouldn't sell. Not that the quality of the work would be poor, but it just would be not the same character that he had created and seen through from beginning to end. And the strafing run, this is him on the glider right there. That's right, that behind shot. Yeah. Shot by Max Clavin. It was yeah. really a good, well-designed uh, glider gag that Max came up with. Yeah. Hanging off of the camera car on a Ubangi on wires. Worked beautifully. Storyboard artists, mostly Doug, uh, Doug Leffler in this sequence, did a great job designing all this. He had a lot of help from um, Neil Spisak in the production department, obviously, with balloons and the set, and also um, Jeff Lynch and Dave mm -hmm. Steffen mm -hmm. contributed a tremendous amount to this. But um, really, my hat's off to Doug. He's such a great visualist. I remember with this sequence, it's so complicated. Andrew Jimenez is really complicated, or really. Uh added a lot uh, with his skills and working this whole sequence out. 
He did, and Karen Galikas contributed quite a bit Most when she definitely. was on the picture. And also John Dykstra and the whole animation team made each and every shot come to life. But finally, it couldn't have been put together unless we had, uh, in this case, Bob Morosky, who really worked these pieces as the editor, exactly. made them all come together. And that was a great swinging shot by our stuntman uh, that Jeff Haberstadt put together. They shot it over the, over the blue sky, over the ocean, because there's no obviously no green screens that big. So uh, they shot that out the ocean. Beautiful swing. I thought Neil Spisak really came up with a beautifully romantic location here for the uh, moment between Peter and Mary Jane. He really did his homework. I mean, you, I've talked to a lot of New Yorkers that didn't even know that this existed on top of the, the Rockefeller Center roof garden, and it's such a beautiful place up there with the church in the background. Starting to swing a little better. Incredible. What do you mean he's incredible? I love when he swings off and lets loose that yell. It's really like the high of public service. Yeah. You know, you've done the best you could do to help others, and I feel like that's what he's celebrating. Yeah. So that's really why it's so effective to me. And he runs along that building. I really love that moment. The fellows in the animation department came up with that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think it was Anthony, our mm -hmm. animation director. Yep. And, like, what do you mean incredible? All right, I'm sorry. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug. Alvin Sargent wrote that scene. It's one of my favorites. It's so funny She's with right. uh, James Franco on the phone with MJ. You just imagine, obviously, the other side of the conversation. And then after being dumped on, and he hangs up the phone and he turns and says, <laughs> She's just a little rattled. <laughs> what else would he be thinking? I didn't. I'm, I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to stay up for a while. What was that thing? I don't know. Whatever it is, somebody has to stop it. That moment was always important to me because I felt it was Peter Parker stepping up to the responsibility of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Somebody there? Somebody. <laughs> Who said that? I love this sequence with Willem. It really takes you to the depths of the insanity that his character is starting to uh, uh, plummet down into. And I really, I really love the device you came up with with the mirror showing his two different personalities and interacting with his two different personalities. You know, that was in the script, and um, I think it's it was all made to work just only through uh, Willem Dafoe's performance. Yeah. Did you think it was coincidence? So many good things all happening for you, all for you, Norman. What do you want? To say what you want. To do what you can't. To remove those in your way. The board members. You killed them. We killed them. We? Remember your little accident in the last... It's this lesson that, you know, that you learn all the time about how much you need to communicate for the story, what's going on, and how much an actor brings, you know, to, to the storytelling. Initially written, it was probably like a three-and-a-half-page scene or something. And the revelation as we went on, along in the process was you could get the everything you had to get from a storytelling standpoint as well as the emotional stuff that was going on with the character much more economically. Spider-Man. And the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin, you like that? Mr. Jameson. Made it up myself. These weirdos all gotta have a name now. Mr. Jameson, Spider-Man. Hoffman? Yeah? Call the patent office, copyright the name Green Goblin. I want a quarter every time somebody says it. How about Green Meanie? 
Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city. He was trying to save it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. You don't trust anybody. That's your problem. I trust my barber. What are you, his lawyer? Get out of here. Let him sue me. Get rich like a normal person. That's what made this country... I remember shooting that scene with the cigar flying back into the window. Usually it would miss the table. Sometimes it would land in uh, J.K. Simmons' lap, burning him. It's a dangerous scene to have that hot thing flying at him from behind. One of my favorites to shoot. Jane Alexander did such a great job with his hair. It's so J. Jonah Jameson. It's it just, he's great. Hey, kiddo, let mom and dad talk for a minute, will you? I am not so different. I'm not like you. You're a murderer. Well, to each his own. I chose my path, you chose the way of the hero. And they found you amusing for a while, the people of this city. But the one thing they love more than a hero is to see a hero fail, fall, die trying. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. Why bother? Because it's right. Here's the real truth. There are eight million people in this city. And this whole notion of trying to see, at least see the eyes, even though we couldn't see any of Toby's features. And of course, I think the genius of what Sam did in the end of the movie was find a way to reveal Toby's face. In, in that final in the final scenes because it's as you can see from looking at this you're limited in what you can how you can act <laughs> behind those masks create or we could destroy cause the deaths of countless innocents and selfish battle again and again and again until we're both dead is that what you want great animation that the fellows did it over at SPI I love him leaping on that glider here he seems like he's got to balance himself for a brief moment. He got to ha got to grab a hold of the front of the glider to stabilize himself, and then it seems very real to me. Yeah. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. This was also shot in the Warner Brothers back lot. It's me again. Hey, how was your audition? Sound man gave me an ugly choice. He said, you can have your cars in the background, or you can have your sound. <laughs> Horrible thing to say. Because they made so much noise going over those wet city streets, those cabs. Yeah. Motion picture cabs are always in terrible shape. Loud engines, terribly in need of a tune-up. It's probably my favorite scene between the two of them. I really, really enjoy it. Like a Alvin Sargent wrote this scene. Did a yeah. beautiful job with it, too. He did a great job. Come with us. No, thanks. Uh, how's it going with... Uh, never mind. That's none of my business. It's not? Why so interested? And Avi Arad had a great idea during this scene. He turned to me and said, maybe this is the point where she can finally say tiger. I don't know. Which is... What all the fans know is one of Mary Jane's favorite taglines. Yeah. So uh, Kirsten then said, why don't I say it just as I leave at the very end? So together, I think they satisfied that one of 1,000 fan requirements. Yeah, it's a great little punctuation mark. This scene was um, further 
torturing of Kirsten mm -hmm. in very, very cold weather and um, freezing cold water. Now, this was not a fun scene. Yeah. Although I did like to do my little butt kicking. You did. I could see the sidewalks are higher on the back lot, so the water floods in the right. street. Chip, you're, you're up, up to water in your ankle. This was tough because we were all bundled up in front of heaters, oh, yeah. and you were out there for hours. Freezing my booty off. Yeah, that was a... And trying to be romantic so right, the same that's time. Right. I remember when we were doing the close-up dialogue without the looping, I was like screaming at him. I was like, you're amazing! Because <laughs> we couldn't hear each other because the rain was so loud. There was a secret door built into the side of that wall mm -hmm. so that Toby could escape into it and that the stuntman could then come down to that opening shot, although this is Toby here. But the first time he saw Spider-Man descend was the stuntman. Does she know or doesn't she? You have that moment where maybe you know it's him? Here? No, that's the when end he of the film. No, but when he says, I was in the neighborhood, oh, really? and you're thinking, no? <laughs> that's what I always think, because he said to you earlier on, I was in the, I was in the neighborhood. Oh, no, I don't think you I'm Jay so. right? So <laughs> or <That's> Kirsten. <laughs> no, no. I, I just, this I came. Give this was away there. There was this wonderful image in the comic book of him with his, you know, mask cap off like that. And it was something that Sam had, another thing that he had in his head very early I on, remember, to I have this image. upside down kiss, which is so, um, I know it was painful, but it really yeah, is a Toby signature moment of the movie. I thought our two mixers, Greg Russell and Kevin O'Connell, did a great job mixing this picture for us. This scene they handled just beautifully like the old fashioned movies. They let the rain all drop away. They brought up Danny Elfman's beautiful score. It just let the audience soar with the emotion of the thing, pushing away the reality of the moment. This was a great piece of location work in New York. And um, I was very impressed that they let us blaze that building as large as, as large as we needed to. Yeah. We really owe a great debt of thanks to the city of New York for that. And John Fednich, he was our New York location manager. He did a lot of, a lot of great work securing the permits and the permission to do that. When Spidey swings in through that window, the one piece of animation that I love so much is when the animator lets his web get caught in the updraft of the heat, and it just, it floats upward in a moment, right before they cut. Really captured the, uh, the lightness of the web. It's okay, your baby's fine. Oh my God. God bless you, Spider-Man. The blanket has like no dirt on it or anything. No, come on, you guys. <laughs> oh my god, there's somebody still up there! I'm going. I'll be here when you get back. Not coming back, Chief. Go! Go! This scene that John Frazier and his team of fire experts put together. I was really impressed by the amount of fire and um, the fact that they pulled it off so safely. It was incredible. So initially, we thought the suits were flammable, oh my God. and they had to. We had did all this experimenting with fire retardant. Scary. Very sad. That's, That's so scary. scary. That yeah. That's. This sequence is uh, just the action in this sequence is amazing. Uh -huh. I think. Like a moth to the flame. What about my generous proposal? Are you in or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> such a cheese line, but really cute. Oh, <laughs> you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. That's one of my favorite pieces of animation there. The fluidity of movement and the, 
the fact they really capture the awkwardness of the human form and, and its grace at the same time. Yeah. It's always impressed by it. I love the weapons, though. This was another kind of a challenge that we'd had this notion about what Sam called razor bats, or these, you know, the pumpkin bomb turns into these flying boomerang, boomerang knife things. <laughs> Scary. Great sound design in here as well. Steve Flick did a great job in putting these sounds together with his team of uh, effects cutters. MJ, will you stop goofing around? Harry, relax. He's here. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Oh, Henry, I'm sorry I'm late. Work was murder. I picked up a fruitcake. Why, thank you, Mr. Osborne. We're so glad you, you could come. Who is this lovely young lady? Um, MJ, I'd like you to meet my father, Norman Osborne. Dad, this is Mary Jane Watson. Hi. How do you do? I've been looking forward to meeting you. Happy Thanksgiving, sir. Now, where is Peter? He better have remembered that cranberry sauce. Oh, that's weird. I didn't know he was here. Peter? The Spider-Man mask obviously wasn't made to come off so easily. James Atchison really had to design one just for that shot that could be pulled off in an instant. He knew it would never hold up to scrutiny, so he made certain that the, exactly what the shot would be and designed it for that. Bit of a slob, isn't he? All brilliant men are. We actually put Toby up there. You did? I'm you done. betcha. This is one of my favorite shots coming up here. He looks up, he's not there. When we come back down, he's already a step ahead of us. I'm furious about it. Hey, everyone. Oh, Peter. Hey. Sorry I'm late. It's a jungle out there. I had to beat an old lady with a stick to get these crams. <laughs> oh, Peter. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Now then, everybody sit down, and we can say grace. Oh. OK. Here we go. I remember the turkey in this scene had been sitting around for about two days. It put off this terrible, rotting, horrible odor. Yeah. People had to pretend that it was a delicious looking thing. In fact, it was nauseating. It created an awful stench that turned your stomach. Why, Peter, you're bleeding. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I stepped off a curb and got clipped by one of those bike messengers. Oh, let me see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that looks awful. No, it's nothing. I'll get the first aid kit. Then we'll say grace. This is the boy's first Thanksgiving in this apartment, and we are going to do things properly. How did you say that happened? Bike messenger. Knock me down. Well, excuse me, I've got to be going. What, why? Something has come to my attention. Are you all right? I'm fine, just fine. Thank you, Mrs. Parker. This sequence, it's such good movie making because it's so entertaining and it's such good, concise storytelling. You know, it's such a, a trend, pivotal moment in the movie where everything, you know, comes together and all the conflicts are. All the rest of the movie is set in motion. Because she likes your personality? What are you saying? Your mother was beautiful, too. They're all beautiful. Until they're snarling after your trust fund like a pack of ravening wolves. You're wrong about her, Dad. A word to the not-so-wise about your little girlfriend. Do what you need to with her, then broom her fast. In that moment with Mary Jane Watson, 
I love where Kirsten is hurt. And then she pulls it together and you see some anger come out. And then she decides she's not going to take it and she stands up. So just keep your mouth shut about stuff you don't understand. I love watching her go through those moments. Mm -hmm. That thought process is... Spider-Man is all but invincible. But Parker, we can destroy him. I can't. Betrayal must not be countenanced. Parker must be educated. What do I do? Instruct him in the matters of loss and pain. Make him suffer. Make him wish he were dead. Yes. And then grant his wish. But how? The cunning warrior attacks neither body nor mind. Tell me how! The heart, Osborne. First, we attack his heart. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Rosemary was a real sport to go through this uh, tremendous uh, physical challenge being thrown about that room yeah. with the wind fans hitting her hard and all the debris flying about around her. And I thought the uh, CGI artist did a great job taking John Fraser's explosion on set, compositing it with her, and then uh, creating some CG debris elements that flew past her that really put her in a uh, explosion sandwich and sold the fact that she was there. Mm -hmm. Look, you're gonna have to leave right what now. Happened? Those eyes, those horrible yellow eyes. The other thing, of course, about the eyes, that scene was the first day we had the suit and we didn't have the eyes for the mask. They hadn't been, we'd never seen them and we were shooting the scene and we were literally running back and forth to the truck trying to m figure out how opaque should they be, how yellow. In those eyes, you couldn't, you, the, when we first did them to get them to look right on camera, you couldn't see through them. This was originally three shots. And I remember uh, Don Burgess at the moment when we were shooting it had the idea to put it all together as one, which was a good idea. It was Parker, the hands, the picture, another angle of Parker, and his aunt. Maybe it was five or six shots. And he thought we could put it all together with one move. It turned out to be the best thing for it because it had a grace in it that cutting would have broken up. Will she be okay? She's gonna be fine. She's been sleeping all day. Thanks for coming. Of course. How are you? I mean, you okay about the other night? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I just felt bad about leaving Aunt May. Have you talked to Harry? He called me. I haven't called him back. The fact is, I'm in love with somebody else. You are? At least Alvin I Sargent did such a beautiful job of writing this speech by Peter. It's not so uh, no, no. Go heartfelt, on. and it really gives you a, a glimpse yeah. into the depths of his soul and his feelings for her. Little girl with a crush. Trust me. It's funny. He saved my life twice, and I've never even seen his face. Wow, him. <laughs> You're laughing well, at me. No, I, I understand. He is extremely cool. But do you think it's true, all the terrible things they say about him? No, no. Not Spider-Man, not a chance in the world. I know him a little bit. I'm sort of his unofficial photographer. Uh, has he mentioned me? Yeah. What'd he say? Uh, I said, uh, he, he, he asked me what I thought about you. Yeah, one of my girlfriends who saw this scene said, oh, this is w what the speech you want every boy, every girl yeah, wants a boy speech. to make yeah. to her. I know. But also, he's, this is one of you know, the many moments when you see what we saw in that room in Berlin is what uh, happened in this scene that made it work so great. Yeah, Toby was easy to work off. Yeah. Everything feels... Not quite normal. I thought both Arthur Coburn and Bob Morosky did a great job with this picture. One of Bob's talents, which is seen in this scene, 
is his uh, sense of performance and take selection. He really has a great talent to be able to go in and watch all the performances again and again, choose what I think is the best of the best, that that really plays in the moment. Except you know what kind of man. Cut them against each other. It's as if you've reached the unreachable. His style of dress is another thing entirely. I'm not ready for it. You said that. Oh, something like that. That was Harry's first day on the set. For some reason, he came in with black hair. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing in the world. We had already figured out he was going to match his hair color to uh, to Willem Dafoe's, and he steps into a shoot, and he's got black hair. It gets a laugh in this theater of the scene because he's like, Dad, Dad, is that you? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous. But the laugh altogether is like such a signature of the character. That's one of my funniest moments in the picture. Where he comes in and hears the rantings and ravings of his father. It reminds me, in fact, it's based on for me. I would come home and hear my mother upstairs <laughs> saying things that she should have said to others during the day, but didn't have the guts. <laughs> Mom? <laughs> well, he's loved her since the fourth grade. He pretends like he doesn't, but there's no one Peter cares for more. I'm so sorry. I haven't always been there for you, have I? You're busy. You're, you're an important man. I, this I, is filmed in one of the great locations in L.A. It's a, a huge mansion up in the Hollywood Hills. That's right. And Neil Spisak so demanded that we not shoot here because he had learned that they had shot a scene from Batman here. Yeah. <laughs> so he demanded that I not photograph it in any way that they had photographed Batman. And he made sure to decorate it in a very different way. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone knows it that, at least they didn't until this moment, when you happen to uh, tell the uh, viewers. Bob came up with the idea of um, putting that scare in at that moment. Actually, it may have been Paul's idea. It's Paul Hart, one of our assistant editors. Paul's idea to put a good scare jolt moment in there. Oh, yeah. I think he did it as a joke, and then, <laughs> like many things, I realized that um, some of the assistant's jokes were better than my editor's great ideas. So we, we took that, and um, <laughs> Bob transformed it into a full-fledged scare. On your face since Mary Jane was here. Hey, you were supposed to be asleep. <laughs> you know, you were about six years old when MJ's family moved in next door. And when she got out of the car and you saw her for the first time, you grabbed This is a great scene that David Kep wrote. It reminds us of Peter's warmth for Mary Jane ever since he was a child. Helped set up the ending of the piece. When he finally walks away from her, you know. He reminded it just how much she means to him. She's still his girl. Well, isn't that up to her? She doesn't really know who I am. Because you won't let her. You're so mysterious all the time. Tell me, would it be so dangerous to let Mary Jane know how much you care? Everybody else knows. I'll be right back. Oh, come on, pick up. Hi. Hey, Steve. MJ. It's... MJ, it's Peter. You there? Hello? You there? Well, I I'm just calling to check up on you. Will you call me when you get in, okay? All right, well, don't. Don't go up any dark alleys. Hello? <laughs> Such a great cackle. Where is she?
we had actually played around with a lot of different locations for this ending. We knew that we wanted to be up high. You know, that seemed like a, a requirement of the storytelling, you know, in right. Spider-Man and the Goblin, Goblin who flies and Spider-Man who swings and all that. And um, then it hit us that, this, that the 59th Street Bridge was the place. Little did we know how difficult it would be to execute because it, in like the Times Square sequence, we couldn't actually go up there and shoot on the top of that bridge. When we first looked at the movie and screened it for the studio for the first time, they had to watch a sequence where MJ was on the bridge, but there was no bridge. Oh, really? And Spider-Man rescued her, but for <laughs> half of the sequence, there was no Spider-Man. So and we were trying to say, no, no, trust us, it's going to be OK. Yeah. I read about 400 kids for those uh, 10 kids in the tram. I know you did. You were in the casting room with them uh, forever. I had, uh, I've spent about four days with nine-year-olds screaming at me and, and crying for me. It was, it was painful. But they all did a great job. I mean, it's, it's really tough. Uh, they go through a lot of emotions there. of hanging and dropping I did. It doesn't look like I did anything that you think of. It doesn't. It looks like really to I me. did a lot. Yeah. But like I was up there for like two weeks straight doing stuff. Yeah, you were hanging and falling. Hanging and falling. Well remember when you did the audition though and Sam said to you Oh yeah, yeah like you're And he said are you in good shape and you made a I'm muscle. Like, yeah, you don't sure. have a lot of muscles. Yeah, I don't have any yeah. muscle. I'm like yes Sam muscle. Sure, whatever you want. This bridge sequence was one of the hardest things that I've ever done as a director. To think about how the real bridge worked and the blocking of the characters on the real structure versus the set pieces that Neil and his team built on the stages versus the CGI bridge that had to be constructed and the cheats that had to be made relative to the real bridge and the set pieces and the underbridge sets that went with it. There was so much to keep in, in mind. It got very, very difficult, I remember. Do you think it was more complicated than Times Square sequence? For me, it was. Because I, I couldn't walk the bridge. Yeah. These places where we shot this didn't really exist as a place that you could scout and know personally. Yeah. So a lot of it had to be kept in the mind or just done through photographs. Exactly. There's so much dimensionality to it, people moving from point A to point B. And I don't just mean left and right or backwards and forwards, but up and down, mm -hmm. under the bridge, over the bridge around the bridge. You really have to have a sense of it in your mind to make the scene work. So it was a real uh, brain twister. And always trying to keep in mind where you are ge geographically as compared to Manhattan and Roosevelt Island to keep the continuity correct. That's right. Yeah. I remember Dan Sweetman, a great storyboard artist, came in the second half of the editing and really helped me rework this sequence based on original work that uh, Jeff Lynch, storyboard artist, had done. And then actually before that, based on work that I had done with another story storyboard artist, Mark Andrews. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody really contributed to this sequence. Along with all the people at um, Sony Pictures Imageworks contributed an incredible amount under John Dykstra's supervision. That's some more great animation right there. What's the groaning cow there? That's the sound of strain on the um, slowed down to, you know, uh, 72 frames a second, the sound of thousands of pounds of torque on this uh, steel cable. Toby's brothers are in the tram, too. I think I mean, one of them was, yeah. Yeah, and John Dykstra, a visual effects um, supervisor, his daughter's in the tra one of the tram kids. Yeah, that's right. John Callie's stepson is one of the tram <laughs> kids. <laughs> Everybody got in the act. Yeah. I'm 
mess with all of us. It took a long time to reset and do those shots. I remember all the, the prop guys and crew members running around picking up rubber pipes and actually rubber chicken was slipped in there, but it took a long time to, to reload all the New Yorkers with the objects to pelt Willem with. Yeah. It's tough because you, you've got about uh, 150 extras. You've treated them badly for about two days. Then you give them objects to throw at you. That's <laughs> a dangerous job. This was a set constructed by Neil and his team of artists that we referred to as the Hulking Ruin. And uh, a lot of beautiful design work done in here. Misery, misery, misery. That's what you've chosen. And this, to a, to a large degree, actually um, exists. It's, it's an old smallpox hospital on Roosevelt Island that's now abandoned. But uh, Neil did take his cue from the actual hospital that's there. It's quite interesting. I thought the mixers did a beautiful job in here. Toby did a great job looping, too. He had to come up with 16 different ways to grunt. Yeah, he did. And it was Peter Menzies' idea to come up with that web that Peter uses to stop the goblin at the last second. He came in as my second unit director of photography just for this sequence. On your last web, Spider-Man. Had you not been so selfish, your little girlfriend's death would have been quick and painless. But now that you've really pissed me off, I'm gonna finish her nice and slow. MJ Sam came in one day and said, I want him to have a trident. I don't know where that came from with electric prods on right. the end. Get him, Spidey. Your will is stronger than his. Kick his buttocks. Kim Kahana did a great stunt here. We, we let this building, we let this wall fall down on him. Willem did do almost all of his own stunts, but that was a great one done by Kim. Sam, I've always been curious, is that arm coming out of the rubble anything? Uh, is that all a wink to Evil Dead? No, it's just a tribute to those old Universal Horror pictures. The monster awakens. The guys at ADI, Amalgamated Dynamics, uh, did a great job with Willem's mask right there, letting us uh, beat it up. and They really did. Yeah. Mr. Osborne. Peter, thank God for you. There's a lot of great work done here, obviously, with Spider-Man's costume and the various stages. I remember we had numerous meetings about, you know, getting him to the stage where you see him right here. And a lot of great work done by Jim Atchison and uh, Lisa Tom Chesson and, uh, and, and his team of his team of artists over there in the costume shop. Jim Atchison had a uh, mock-up of the Spider-Man outfit on a dummy that he kept in the back of a truck. Yeah. He'd follow me around to location to location and keep li lifting up the back tailgate of this truck and <laughs> saying, how about this, Sam? And he'd take a razor blade to it and slice away more pieces and more yeah. pieces. He really worked uh, long and hard on that. The battle-ravaged Spider-Man look. Yeah. As I believed in you, I've been like a father. It was difficult because the whole costume works on tension, as Jim painstakingly told me again and again. You could only remove certain pieces and still have it hold together properly. Yeah. Yeah, actually, for the rain sequence, he had to ruin one of our, our costumes to uh, to make the head removable and peeled up like that and build special uh, special helmet. But this shot of Willem coming up was actually shot later. This one, you can tell because he was already already in another show and he had to wear a wig. It's more like the David Bowie of uh, <laughs> Green Goblins. Don't tell Harry.
I think we just wanted him, the reason we redid that shot was we wanted him to say, don't tell Harry. Yeah. Rather than it being an act of kindness that Peter performs not telling Harry, we wanted him to fulfill the last wish of Norman Osborn, this man who'd been the surrogate father to him. Mm -hmm. So that he had an obligation and a friendship to perform these last acts and to keep this dark secret. So remember this, this was our the first day, day in New York. It was so cold and so windy. And once again, we had one day to shoot this critical end scene in the movie. But it was literally, must have been like 20 degrees. I don't know what it's like to lose a father. I remember the fellow playing, playing the priest in the background kept asking me for a line. I didn't lose it. I, I can't give it to you, he's just a background <laughs> player in this. Yeah. He had about 10 different ideas how he could have a speaking part in this scene. I swear on my father's grave, Spider-Man will pay. I really like um, James Franco's performance in this scene. I really feel he's becoming his father. Peter. Finally walking to that car that he was so embarrassed of yeah. in the first scene. He's very understated. I think he's uh, just brilliant in this last part. You can feel the evil brewing uh, inside him and the hatred. That's a great shot. He's almost walking to his destiny. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, the ones I love will always be the ones who pay. You must miss him so much. It's been so hard without him. There's something I've been wanting to tell you. When I was up there, and I thought I was gonna die, there was only one person who I was thinking of. And it wasn't who I thought it'd be. There's so many questions when you go to shoot a scene. I remember um, Toby and Kirsten, they brought so much to this scene. One, but one of the questions was, they weren't sure that we should do the kiss at the very end. Mm -hmm. And um, I really appreciate them going for it and giving, uh, giving it a shot. Because uh, it turned out, and you never know it at the time, that it wouldn't have even worked without it. Yeah. Like I'm more than I ever thought I could be. But we developed a great deal of trust throughout the course of the making of the movie, and they were willing to try things, and eventually they learned to trust you that if it doesn't work, that you won't keep it in the finished picture. Mm -hmm. Laura was a big advocate of it, too. I have to thank her for that, Yeah, her producer. I love you. Yeah, you had a great collaboration with these two. They're very talented and gifted, well beyond their years. Toby did this scene, you know, Toby screen tested which for the job, and he did this uh, version of this scene, which was really the thing the oh, studio executives were actually in tears when they saw it, really? and that's when they said they knew he was absolutely the perfect, perfect choice Peter for Parker. the movie. You can't what? Tell you everything. I mean, there's so much to tell. Yeah. There's so much to tell. Same if you were 19, would you walk away? I want you to know. I can't remember what it was like being 19. I will always be there for you. I will always be there to take care of you. I promise you that. I will always be your friend. Only your friend? Peter Parker? That's all I have to give.
this scene was a great combination of uh, David Kep, Alvin Sargent, great input from the producers, mm -hmm. and of course the actors. Yeah, Laura did a lot of great work in that scene. Life holds in store for me. I will never forget these words. As I watch him at the end here, I really feel he has matured, grown into the person this is my gift. that yeah. his uncle thought he could be. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. And this is the shot. This shot was actually literally conceived 18 months before we delivered the movie. And they started working on the shot, and it was the very last thing that came into the last shot that went into the film just as we were finishing the dub. It's an it's absolutely amazing, amazing shot. Yeah, it is. This is Sam Raimi on behalf of the cast and crew and everybody who worked on Spider-Man. Thank you for watching the movie with us.